Hello, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you are all doing well. Today, I am coming at you with a non-spoiler review and book chat for those of us who have read on The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I picked this as one of my book of the month choices and I've recently finished it and I'm super excited to chat about this. And my next review is going to be on my most anticipated book of 2020, which is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. I am currently listening to this on audiobook. It just came out this week and I have been so super excited for this. So it is officially beanie season here in Chicago. I think our high is 50 today and it's super windy, but I love the cold weather. So I'm actually super excited about this and there's nothing better than putting a fire on and just curling up with a good book, which is exactly what I did with The Night Swim. So if you're new to my channel, I always start off with a non-spoiler review and premise for the book that I am reviewing, followed by what I'm rating the book, and then at the end of the video is a book chat for those of us who have read. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started about what The Night Swim is all about. So this book actually centers around a true crime podcast, which I'm sure, as you guys know, is all of the rage right now. I personally don't listen to a whole ton of podcasts because I'm always listening to an audiobook, but I know that true crime podcasts are like all the rage. And that's exactly what this book is about. So the book centers around our main character, who is a creator of a true crime podcast. And one day she receives a letter from a woman named Hannah, who basically says that Around, I think it was 20 years ago, she believes that her older sister was brutally raped and murdered. However, in the current town, or I'm sorry, in the town that she grew up in, they pretty much shoved it under the rug and kind of deemed this poor teenage girl um, a slut, so to speak, and said that, she, you know, she just went night swimming and she drowned when her sister is adamant that she was actually brutally raped and then murdered. So our true crime podcast creator is like, you know what? I'm going to go to this town anyways and try to look into this, but also the town was having a current murder and rape trial. So her plan was to go and sit in the courtroom while the trial was um, going on to give her listeners a true feel of what it's like to be listening to a current case as it's waiting for the verdict. Who is our true crime podcast creator goes to this town and she's trying to juggle two things, right? She's trying to see if there's any truth to was this teenage girl brutally raped and murdered? Are people lying? Do people know something? And she's also trying to invest her time and energy into the current um, rape case. So during this current um, rape trial, the young teenage girl is accusing a very well-known athletic or athlete um, who is a swimmer and he's saying that he didn't do it and she's sitting there in court every day and she's writing everything down because she obviously can't record what everybody's saying um, but she's writing it down and then she goes back to her hotel room and she films the latest podcast and she ends it with saying something like you know this is you know this is rachel um giving you like letting you inside the jury box or something like that i don't know but that's basically it the book is rachel delving into both the current um rape trial and then the past rape and murder trial and um yeah it's basically that i i would not categorize this as a thriller if anything, I would say that this is just like a suspense drama. Um, and I know that I am in the unpopular opinion in terms of how I ended up rating this book. I know a lot of people loved this book. And typically when I'm reading a book, I I don't like to read reviews on it because I don't want to be skewed. But um, I was seeing it all over Instagram. If you don't follow my book Instagram, it's at Heather's Book Review. Um... But I was seeing it all over and people were like, this is so good, this is so good, this is so good. And then I finally got to it and I was like, eh, I don't know. I mean, like I would give it a three out of five on Goodreads and I feel like even then I was like debating giving it a two. I wish, I say this all the time, but I wish you could do half stars on Goodreads because I'd probably give it a two and a half. But I don't know. I felt like I couldn't connect or even, I feel like I didn't know Rachel, our main character, 
at all. I felt like, granted, the book was taking place on the two families, right? Their murder and rape trial in the past, and then the current families that were involved in the current rape trial. But like, I just feel like we didn't know anything about Rachel. And I just felt like when I was reading her perspective, it was like, I don't know. I just, I couldn't connect with it. And I felt like because of that, it was pretty hard to like be excited to read it and continue to read it. There's also like a little twist at the end, but I didn't feel like it was a twist at all. Um, I felt like I knew what you end up finding out like the entire time just based off of like hunches. And I don't know, it was pretty underwhelming for me. So now I'm gonna get into the book chat part of the video for those of us who have read. So I don't wanna spoil it for you. If you're new here, I would love if you could click that like button and subscribe and that post notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new bookish related video. Okay, so I don't have a whole lot to say, unfortunately. I feel like I definitely had a feeling that, um, and sorry, I'm totally blanking on like all of the character names because it's been probably about two weeks since I read this book. Um, but our current rape trial, the girl's dad was involved in everything in the past. I had a feeling from that just probably towards like the middle of the book when they were talking to the dad and the mom and just how like they both had different viewpoints on like how, how badly um, the guy should suffer. And I don't know, I was just like, well, his age, like he would have been around a teenager when Hannah's sister was like going through all of that stuff. So that was not a very big twist for me. Um, I am happy that Hannah kind of got that closure in the end, um, seeing as though, you know, it really impacted her, her entire life. But other than that, I just kind of like I was saying earlier, like I couldn't really get into this book and nothing really like wowed me. Um, I liked the true crime podcast feel, but that was basically it. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this book. And I will see you in my next review, which again is on The Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. And it's so freaking good so far, just like I knew it would be. So as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, you guys.